The Binge King presents you an American horror thriller hit movie in which Chris, an African American man, decides to visit his Caucasian girlfriend's parents during a weekend gateway, but finds his life threatened. I urge you to keep your lungs filled with restrained air because this video is full of spoilers. The movie starts with a screening of a man being abducted by a mysterious black masked guy. Later we see a black photographer, Chris to meet the family of his white girlfriend, Rose Armitage. During their journey, Rose hits a deer. Upon the arrival of the police, Chris has been subjected to a suspect. But Rose scolds the officer and ensures Chris that no one can troublesome his van. Pursuing their journey, Chris felt insecure while thinking that Rose's parents would not like him, as he's black. At the Armitage house, he turns out to be wrong as her parents nicely welcome him. Rose's father, Dean, is a neurosurgeon, and her mother, Missy, is a hypnotherapist. From the minute that Chris and Rose arrive at her parents' house, something is unsettling. Although Dean and Missy seem friendly enough, almost too much so, like they're looking to impress Chris. Like Rose's parents enlighten them with the upcoming annual get-together. Moreover, Chris witnesses strange behavior from the housekeeper Georgina and groundskeeper Walter. At night, Chris is unable to sleep. He goes out to smoke but gets terrified after seeing Walter running towards him and Georgina looking herself at the glass window. Back in the house, Missy pressurizes him into a hypnotherapy session to cure his smoking addiction. In doing so, he expresses guilt over his mother's death when he was a child. He sinks into a void that Missy calls the sunken place. The next morning, Chris awakens and thinks that he had encountered a dream until Walter apologizes for his weird behavior from last night. Walter also tells him that he had a long session with Missy last night, which confirms that he was not dreaming and something weird is going on in this house. The next day, dozens of wealthy white people arrive for the Armitage's get-together. They express appreciation for Chris's physique. Jim Hudson, a blind art dealer, takes a particular interest in Chris's photography skills and tells him that his work is wonderful. Back to the party, he meets another black man, Logan King, who behaves weirdly and is married to a much older white woman. As Chris was full of boredom at the party, he gets back to his room and then we see everyone silently watching him. It looks like as all of them have attended the party because of him. Strange. In the room, Chris notices that someone has unplugged his phone from charging. He suspects Georgina, but after getting into a conversation with his girlfriend, he finishes the matter on the spot. After that, Chris calls his friend, a TSA officer, Rod William, and tells him about the strange behavior of the people living in this house. Rod recommends he has to get out of the house, as he may get into trouble. As Chris was talking, Georgina interrupts and apologizes for her mistakes. During their cross dialogues, she starts crying, which irons our doubts even more. Back to the party, Chris tries to snap a picture of Logan, but when his flash goes off, Logan starts behaving mad, shouting at Chris to get out. Everyone restrains him and Dean claims that Logan had a seizure. Rose and Chris left the party to go on a walk and from onward the story gets even more interesting. The main plot of the story starts when Chris and Rose are away from the party. Chris convinces Rose that they should leave, meanwhile Dean holds an auction with a photo of Chris, which Hudson wins. Confusing, right? It looks like Chris is going to be sold to slavery. While Chris and Rose came back, the Armitages evilly smile towards him. Back in the room, Chris sends Logan's photograph to Rod and luckily he recognizes him as Andre Hayward, the man who had been abducted at the per curtains scene of the movie. Suspecting a conspiracy, Chris packs to leave and in doing so he finds a photo of Rose in prior relationships with black people, including Walter and Georgina, which contradicts her claim that Chris is her first black boyfriend. Do you think Rose is being hypnotized by her mother or she's also involved in the plan? We are about to find out. The movie Get Out released in 2017 overwhelmed us with twists and as Chris tries to leave the house, Rose and her family block his way. Chris attacks Rose's brother Jeremy, but Missy uses a trigger that she had implanted during hypnosis, knocking him out. After a quiet moment, Chris awakens bound to a chair in the basement. In a video presentation, Rose's grandfather Roman explains that the family transplants their brains into other bodies. This business grants them preferred physical characteristics and twisted form of immortality. Hudson also tells him that the host's consciousness remains in a sunken place, which means that the host will be alive and conscious but powerless. He reveals that he wants Chris's body because of his physique and sight. After the presentation, Mission performs hypnosis again to knock out Chris. 
Conversely, Rod goes to the police, reporting them of Chris missing. He tells the police officer about his approach to the case. At first, she takes him for granted, but as he speaks about getting black men into slavery, she gets serious and informs some teammates. When they hear his views, all of them begin to laugh, because who would make black men slaves in the 21st century? Back home, Rod gets a call from Chris's number. It was Rose. She informs him that she and Chris got into a fight, and he left the house two days ago. Rod is certain that she's lying. He tries to record her call, but she changes the topic by talking about him and censoring him for liking her. Back at the arbitrage house, Dean is preparing a surgery to transplant Roman's brain and consciousness into Chris. When Jeremy comes to fetch Chris for the surgery, Chris bludgeons him unconscious. Turns out that he has blocked the hypnosis by plugging his ears with cotton stuffing from the chair. After that, he killed Dean with the antlers of a deer mount, which causes Dean to knock out over a candle. Setting fire to the operating facility, Chris then also kills Missy. As he heads towards the door, he gets attacked by Jeremy. Chris overpowers and kills him before leaving in his car. Meanwhile, Rose is having fun in her room and searches for black boys on the internet. She senses some trouble. Conversely, Chris carries Georgina into the car after remembering his mother's death. Later, we come to realize that Georgina is possessed by Rose's grandmother, Mariana, as she attacks him, and during the fight, the car crashes, which kills her at the spot. Rose apprehends Chris and tries to shoot him, and meanwhile, Walter, who is possessed by Rose's grandfather, Roman, attacks him. Chris was almost dead, but suddenly he uses the flash in his phone which neutralizes Roman, like he once neutralized Logan. After using the flashlight, Walter regains control of his body and takes Rose's rifle, shoots her in the stomach and then shoots himself too, killing both him and Roman. In the end, Chris begins to choke Rose but stops because he loves her. At the very same moment, the police arrived and as he is black, Rose tries to take advantage of her being white. Guess what? The police officer turns out to be Rod. He arrives in a TSA car and rescues Chris, leaving Rose bleeding on the road. Quite a perplexing movie, isn't it? Though it visualizes the cruel reality of the world perspective towards black men, and the dark side of science, which tries to play God. Do you think this kind of perspective should be acceptable? Share your thoughts and let us know about how you like the film. Also, share your best fan moments in the comment section below.